Hi gang, Scott here. We're continuing our exploration of the On1 masking tools. This video, we're looking at the masking bug and specifically the reflected gradient shape. This is a little different than the gradient and I'll explain why and how in this video here. Uh, if you didn't watch the other video on the masking bug, in brief, the masking bug tool is a good choice when you have a reasonably large area of your photo that you need to treat. You either need to remove a portion of a filter from a large area of a photo, or you need to apply a local adjustment to a large area. So uh, with the reflected gradient shape, that's the focus of this video, uh, let's first go through what the controls are, and then I'll show you an example of it in action. So first let's explain the reflected gradient shape. Uh, let me add a new filter to the stack. I'll just choose antique, open up the masking area and click view so we can see the controls. So right now we have a pure white mask. This antique is being applied everywhere. If I choose my masking bug tool and the shape of reflected gradient and we drop one of those onto the scene. We get this interesting like you know black bar that's going through the center here. So what's happening is the reflected gradient gives you like a band through your mask where you can in this case remove or hide part of the filters effect and then you can control the feather uh, independently on each side. So similarities with the gradient is we have you know the, the center pin to position it we have a rotation pin to rotate it and we have feather controls but notice that each one is independently operated and you can control like the narrowness of the band itself so you have four linear controls here each one can be operated independently. So if you need a really, really big fade on the bottom, like a narrow band where you get the full strength of your filter and then maybe less here, you've got lots of options here. So when you have something through the center of a photo or you know, a vertical as well, right? We could rotate this vertically as well. Uh, where you have one of these bands going through that you need to treat, you can do so. Uh, like any mask, we can also invert it. And just to see, you have that same kind of thing with applying to uh, a, a, a portion of a photo. But the key thing with the reflected gradient is you get this reflection, right? And for landscape photos, it's really great for things that are you know at the horizon line where you want something treated there. Or um, it's a, a nice use for um, a quick uh, vignette where you just want like the sides of your photos darkened or the bottom and the top darkened as opposed to trying to work with the vignette tool to convince it to uh, to not be touching all the corners reflected gradients a really good choice uh, but you know these are the controls and again we have opacity for those uh that you know the entire thing overall we can add multiples this usually once again ends up in like you know some pretty odd scenarios where you have in this case, I'm removing from here. In this case, I'm adding here. Remember, I inverted this one. You can get some pretty interesting patterns going on. I don't tend to use multiple masking bugs within the same filter or local adjustment. I'll usually use the masking bug to get my broad work finished and then use other masking tools to fine tune things, brushes, or uh, you know the, uh, the line mask or other tools that are in the uh, the, the toolkit here. Uh, so with uh, with this, let me reset. Uh, I'll use the reset button here. I'll invert so we're back to our our pure white mask. But just to recap those controls: reflected gradient, center pin to position, outer little pin arm to rotate, and we have the controls for setting where the first transition point is and feather and then second transition point and feather. You have independent control over either side of the reflected gradient. So uh, when would we use this? What's an example? Well I'm going to show you one right now with a landscape photo 
where this will be helpful to uh, to reduce some haze that's uh, kind of in the in the center of the photo toward the background. All right, let's drop this antique here, and I have this hillside in the background here. It's got some some significant haze on it. I'll reduce that haze, and this is a great job for the reflected gradient. I'll do the haze reduction with a local adjustment. Add an adjustment because we have a haze slider. Let's stage our, our, our controls here. Exposure and haze will reduce haze. Let's reduce it a whole lot so we can see what's going on and then we'll fine tune it later. But, uh, as before, if you activate a local adjustment, you get the local masking group and there is a bug in here. It's called the adjustable gradient, but it works exactly the same way as the masking bug. Two names for the same thing. There's a video about all the different mask groups that tries to demystify that, but um, you know, just know that the controls is what's important. I don't really care about the name of the tool at this point. I want reflected gradient. I can click on this little bug icon. I have reflected gradient. I am ready to go. So I'll click right in the center here. Now what's going on is I am having haze added to the outside. Remember I'm working with a local adjustment and by default locals have nothing applied and you add it in. Well, I want the exact opposite of this, right? I'll open up the masking area, invert my mask. Okay, now I've got this haze reduction going through this, this narrow band here through the center. And so let's just position that. Maybe my transition will be just below the foothills and then we'll make that pretty tight along, along the bottom there. Now, Haze in and of itself is reasonably intelligent, right? We don't see a lot happening on the trees because there's not a lot of haze there. But now I can just fine tune that control and maybe I need to bring my upper transition point to the ridge line. Let's rotate it ever so slightly so we're kind of mirroring that ridge line and fine tune the haze adjustment before and after, just downplaying that ever so slightly. And I'll maybe even take my feather and push that out a little bit more. Because ultimately, there's no, there's no right or wrong position for these different transition lines, the feathers. It's about the look of the photo, and I want that haze to be reduced in that background there. So that's got everything looking good, and I'd say we're, we're in pretty great shape there with that reflected gradient. Um, I mentioned a couple of other potential uses for it. Let me just show you the, the vignette usage. This isn't necessarily a conducive photo for it, uh, but just to give you an idea of how you can use the reflected gradient in a couple of other scenarios. So uh, let me add one more adjustment here. And let's say we wanted to do some type of like top to bottom uh, vignette. So exposure is, is very dark. I have my reflected gradient. I can choose that and let's say I wanted to push the eye down from the top to this tree line. This is really what's most interesting here. And then fade this off here some like that, like this. Fade this out. Uh, here's a tip. If you wanted to fade beyond the edges of your photo, you can't reach it right now use the command or control minus key to zoom out and you can take that feather and go well beyond the borders of your photo so you get a very nice fade you know the the other way of doing that is if you're zoomed in like this and you can't see it you can kind of bring the pin down and play with the feather and then push it back into place and then repeat that for the bottom part or command or control minus zoom out and you can work visually and see everything where you want it to be and command or control zero brings you back to your normal fit to screen view and so now here is that before and after of this, like this top to bottom vignette just kind of doing that uh, that like you know band through the middle of this is bright and I'm fading top and bottom drawing your eye in. So one more example of the reflected gradient in action. So let's look at those two adjustments before those reflected gradients and after. 
So that is the reflected gradient shape in the masking bug. To recap, you know, key point is you get this band uh, that you can put through your photo at any angle because you can rotate it in position just like any gradient. But you have independent controls on either side of that band for where the transition happens and how much feather. So you can set the transition point and the feather independently on either side. It's great for landscape photos. It's useful for uh, you know, vignettes that are just doing a side to side. You'll start to find more uses for it as you pay attention to the, the different kinds of photos when you've got these you know, things that cut through the entire scene and you want to either highlight them or downplay them. Hope you found the video useful. Got questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.